Okay, hi folks. Just quick uh, run through the daytime client and echo client and server. Um, so this screen here shows step by step what happens in daytime client. I'm not gonna read it out to you, but it basically um, here we have a couple of imports that we have to do in programming. It's just like like common uh, common practice you you add stuff to your library um to get the functionality in the next slides i'll show more in depth how which one is used for uh, to what so kind of you get the feel why do we get all the, all of these um like for example for example this practical age uh that we actually created or damon did and we used it while while we were compiling stuff um <laughs> let me check if I'm actually oh no okay um so step by step you can see here uh what happens but it's not as in depth as the rest of the slides so I'm going to just um this one you can just read yourself uh, for yourself some of it is like you know reminder of what is actually the the arc count or arc uh values the array of values so you can see with an example here that if you type, if you compile your date, uh, daytime client and then you run it with the dot slash, which means like in my folder that I'm in, uh, run this file and this is the first, arg uh, this is like a second argument and that's the third argument because this is like the first one. First argument, second second argument, third one. So the, the index of that one would be zero, index of this one is one and index of this one is is two and that's why you see one and two in here but anyway just have a look but let's um yeah so kind of to remember how the the client and server so uh, sockets work the, the the programs for sockets because it's a basically it's 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 a program for two entities to communicate with each other uh, it can be on one computer it can be on on different computers it doesn't matter if you want something to be sent somewhere else there must be some sort of a connection that will accommodate that kind of behavior where you send uh, you create a con connection and one side is is serving the information one one side is kind of receiving the information but also the receiving and needs to provide some information as well sometimes so that's why we create those sockets so it's it's no like you know crazy magic is just like a program that talks to another program it's called api uh, we we did some some stuff with like i think we kind of we spoke about apis on one of the modules i think but basically it's just a way programs are communicating with programs or computers communicating with computers um okay so in here to break it the daytime client uh, code we get some sort of preparation for um for the socket function and then we get another preparation for the connect function and then we uh, do the receiving and this guy here shows how the sockets work so if we have a client the client socket these are called i think they're called primitives um that's kind of that makes sense we get uh, well in the socket library we have primitives such as socket function mm, connect function and receive function for example there's more there's actually like I can show you here. Uh, da, da, da. Mm, more? Oh, there's more. How did I get out uh, here? So you can just Google sys slash socket dot age, and if you if you find this website, you have all the information about the library itself, and then you have the the primitives of of the of of this library so you have accept bind connect blah 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 receive uh, and they're all 
all in there and I'll be using snippets from this website on on my slides so it's just like in one place easier um, so yeah, so you can clearly see, and the question could be like, how, how do you know it's it's a it's a client socket and it's not a server socket? Yeah, because I don't see bind. See this this guy here is tricky. I wouldn't mind that guy because this is kind of like data preparation. Uh, it happens in the client. This is kind of we set. Uh, sorry, in here we set something for connect. So and we do the same for bind. Uh, in the server. So, but basically, if you see socket, oops, go back. If you see socket and then bind and then listen and then accept and send and receive, clearly that's a. And in this order, it has to first we have to call the socket function, um, and so on. Um, so that's the server. And if you see socket and then connect and then send or receive, send or receive, or both. Well, you probably need both. Uh, then it's uh, it's client. So probably if you just remember connect, if you're a client, you connect to something, you connect to the server, yeah, and and um, and if you're a server, you listen. Bind basically says, kind of when someone wants to connect to me, bind to that guy, to that client. So uh, that kind, you can remember that as well. Like you bind to, I'm a server, so I whoever comes in I bind to that client and then um, and then we listen to that client and we accept that client and we send and receive with, between these the messages between this client and then we close the connection and here you can see so in orange I, I put uh, where we uh, collect information and then in here uh, we use that information in and I kind of explained that here, what exactly happens. Uh, but this is kind of easier for, for, for you to see. Uh, in here, we just collect information from, from basically, from this, uh, you know, f when we call the, the program, the, the, the socket. So we do daytime client, address, and the port. And then these are used in the address in here on port and it's being you know crunched and a lot of programming is kind of works this way we, you know you send a string obviously when you when you do when you do this kind of you know daytime one two seven oh oh one and then something it's a string every time you put in something into the line in the command line it's a string so then you have to somehow explain to the to to this library to those you know socket or or connect or or receive <coughs> sorry or receive functions that this string actually means something but those this library and those functions inside of that library they don't understand um, strings they understand something called for example in here struct sock address in uh, in for internet probably but basically, this is like a structure that can be then used. Uh, that's that's the name of a variable. So serve address, serve address can be used in here in connect. So connect doesn't understand um, exactly what is a string of one two seven point oh point oh point one, and then another string eight o for a port. But if we put that together in this structure, then we can use it in the con uh, connect function. So maybe it sounds complicated what I'm saying, but basically we, we kind of break it down and we, we put it together the way the computer understands it, but we do really very simple thing in here. We kind of just like initialize stuff in here, we initialize stuff in here, and then we check some stuff. So if we don't have enough arguments, if it's not like, you know, three arguments, and as I said, it's one, two, and three arguments in this case. Uh, then give us some error, and again, like in here, uh, I said that these errors don't don't even mind those errors. They are just like from practical .h uh, library. It's just something. It's is a good practice probably uh, to use kind of you know external uh, header file. It's called called header files. It's practical to use them kind of outside instead of like jamming in a lot of. 
um, functionality in one program we can have them outside and just like import them here but don't mind uh, you know die with user message it's just like stop the stop everything and just come back with this message and just say oh yeah something uh, something didn't work in this case uh, you're supposed to give me parameters of uh, I didn't get enough parameters for for this uh, program and then we get some server IP so that's the that's if if it's okay if it didn't you know you, you can see the indentation here it's funny because it's not C actually it's C++ I think because in C you would need parentheses here I think so you kind of say yeah if and then this is the if this is the if and then we we are out of the of if statement if it's just like one liner then you can put it in without the the the, the, the sorry curly braces curly braces and then we are outside if that did, wasn't triggered so if we didn't kill our um client socket we go to another step and we and we say okay so get those arguments and then use those arguments here um cr to create a socket and so on so i'm going to i'm going to actually this one is just the daytime client and what the daytime client does it it connects to the and we have to say what where do we connect yeah in here we say okay use the daytime client socket and connect to this address on that port and it's supposed to receive at the very end so we blah 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 it creates the the information for um for the connect and then so we can receive something and what it's supposed to receive is the daytime that is being f um i suppose on the labs there was some server set up for this i, I didn't do it so but basically it's a, it's a very basic concept that's why we started with this and then we move it move on to the echo server and client which ex explains more so i'm not going to stay on explain too much um talk about the, the the daytime thing because as i said in here you can go through step st through it step by step and in here uh, and sorry in here um we can we can appreciate the uh, you know the the differences between server and client more and the full functionality uh, because in here for example we have both send and receive and in here we just have receive uh, so anyway so as you can see again um, those codes can be uh, broke down into those kind of primitives you can call it um, as I said before set so uh, we have to set it we have to set the uh, sorry yeah the the socket address on both sides you do it in here and you do it in here so kind of don't mind this one but basically if you see socket bind listen accept send receive we are on the server side if we see socket connect and um send and receive we are the client yeah connect kind of how to remember this I think that I just like as a client imagine you're a client to, for like you want to buy some food you want to get a falafel and you you have to connect you have to call someone and say hey I want a falafel and they listen and they accept and they send it to you and, and, I, and I receive in this case so kind of you have to as a client you have to be the guy who says yeah I want something and then the server listens it doesn't go and say hey take my stuff although you don't need it server just serves yeah and those and how how do you see those it's the it's the functions here so um we look for the function called socket and why how do i know it's a function it's a it's a word and then we have the parentheses and we have a couple of arguments in it and so that looks like a function so look for a function socket look for a function bind look for a function listen uh, look for for a function um, accept and da, 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 receive da, da, receive and send in here yes yeah, send and receive you can do both on server side and in, on this side look for socket look for connect and look for both receive 
which is just like spelled funny R E C V, and then you get uh, where is the send? Oh, yeah, no, we send first. You remember, you send something to the server, server reads it, and then sends it back. Uh, so we receive after. By the way, this is just like a like a very specific use of of client server communication. This is just for the practice. It's not like probably there is nothing, you know, in in actual worlds it doesn't exist. It would have no. It could be just used for testing. Nobody would use this combination of server and client in the in the real world because who needs a socket that just like gets the string and sends it back who needs it um so anyway okay so let's let's start with the echo server because it's more complex as you can see it has more primitives being uh, called um and then i can just like fill the gaps in here so in here we get uh, so from the top um we do the time t ticks, which basically is just like a counter uh, from this library here. Um, counts time in seconds. That's it. Nothing. Probably won't. Any question will be focused on this. Kind of good to know. It's good to know what all the code does, so then you don't have any doubts like where something comes from. Sometimes you feel like something is magically becoming something. So if you go step by step and you understand each line of code, then you're like, okay, I get it now. And it's a bit easier to focus on the specifics you need to understand really for the for the for the exam. So in here we just get the char uh, buffer and it's a, it's an array of of characters. This variable so we just declare it, we don't initialize it, we don't give it any values, we just say, hey, in memory somewhere, keep, remember, we need uh, a, something for buffer that will be size of, in this case, 512 characters, and we set that in the practical.h, the header, mm, this is again like a practice, it's, it's like a good practice, if we want to change that buff size, uh, we use it in like 10 different places then we can just change it once and then it's all changed in every in every place so it's just like a good good practice and then in here um yeah so we just say like we kind of initialize this to zero because we we didn't get anything yet this is this will be used for receiving um so for now we just say like no nothing happened. If that was like minus one, that could say oh there's a problem, but we just say like nothing, nothing happened yet. And I'll tell you why the minus one thing. Um okay. Okay, it gets a bit messy, but it doesn't usually look look like this. So from the top, um so if we don't have two arguments, so that's the server, it doesn't need three arguments, it just needs two. It needs the you know the call of the uh, it needs the call of the program itself and then we just have to put in the the port that we'll be listening to uh, so we go in here and in here yeah so that's the so we just have to say okay if if we don't have enough then kill the program kill the server and say we need more we actually can't run this server we need we need more parameters to run it. And then we go to this line. If we don't kill the program, if everything is okay, we gave it the port number. Um, so we can actually store it in the port, uh, serve port variable of the type in port T, which is one of the types that we can find in this library. So I Google this library, I went here, I found this. And it's basically some sort of a integer, 16-bit integer, probably. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Um, just good to know that when you see this. Uh, well, sorry, there is a question about this. So kind of remember that this is how we store um, the port, not as an integer. We store it as uh, in port t, and that's it. And you see. Uh, 
a to i means like we and you can stop and read it but basically we change uh, a string that as i said before everything here when we call a pro program on in the command line each of these is a string so we have to do something with them and in this case we change it from the string to an integer that we can actually assign to this which don't ask me why and in here again as i said before die with message is just something that we compiled along the way but really don't mind that it's just like when something doesn't work we need to kill it kill the program and also print out the, the error that occurred okay so uh, we're still on eco server uh, and we're on this line here so we in the, so we declare server sock um, integer because the socket function returns an integer and you can read it here and so we kind of we put that into it's it's funny how you can use this um, language you can you can declare it here and you can assign it here inside of, of an if and and test it at the same time so you declare it and you say okay so declare it and then test it if it's less than zero so if we get minus one then there is an error indicates an error so if there is an error uh, kill the program and print this out um, but if if everything is okay if if it's not lesser than zero then we're happy and we have this assigned this socket um, it's assigned here and you can read in the description that it's like a, uh, <coughs> it's a soc socket file descriptor descriptor so it's it's that integer is actually the socket file descriptor don't ask me what that is I don't think it's it, it's that important for the exam so don't worry about that it's just like it, it holds some uh, integer the the return value is some sort of a in some sort of an integer and the only problem is when it's minus one basically ev each of these uh, functions here socket and then bind and whatever if they return minus one something went wrong and that's it so just that's how it works okay so in here then we um, start building this structure for the server address because we are the server we create this the kind of the local address in this case so we, we still can call it server address um, but it's like our address this is our kind of setup and in in the comments here you can see that you know you put in the local address um, Ah, yeah, so sorry. So in here we declare it. So we declare this variable which is called serve address adr. I'll just call it server address. And it is of type struct soc address in. And that guy can be found in this library. So I found this library. I checked this so you can see how it's built. So each soc address in, which is probably internet. In stands for internet I think because in here like you have socket internet anyway you have sin family um, you have sin port sin address and sin zero and they're of type short short word I believe so you can like for, for example that can be this string mm, and they all mean something but you'll see uh, later uh, what what for example this this uh, af is address family so what that address family stands for what this string stands for and what it does and then we have the unsigned short uh, for the port uh, so that's why we did this, uh, this in port t mm, which sorry no which which we then have to H tons, but it doesn't matter. But basically, that's what it holds. That port here comes from the argument, from the param parameters we used, and then we get the structure. So this is a structure inside of a structure. It's like a nested structure. It's not too scary. It's just like you know, 
then you can do something like this. You can this is this is the name of that variable that we declared, and then we can kind of go inside. There's a dot here, and say okay, sin address. So we go inside of this and we do another dot and we say s address, and that's kind of it says okay, c struct in add below. So it kind of goes inside of inside of the uh, this whole structure. So that's how nested structures work. It's it's not you know to, it's like a folder in a folder. You can keep stuff inside that like these are the files inside of the folder, but this is actually another folder inside a folder. Nothing scary. It's just like you go inside again and you can keep another bunch of files inside there and another bunch of folders if you want. Uh, it's not uncommon. Uh, where am I? I'm not making it easy. Okay, sorry. So, okay, and then we just zero out. Really, mem remember this because it's um, how it's being used, and there is a description of the mem set. Uh, because there is one question that I found on the on on the mem set function, but it's but it's it's a standard function from C library um, returns nothing void um, and then e the arguments here on the or the parameters here um, are these in here these so in case of, of so okay what what happens here is we put in some structure in here and we say what we want to what kind of value we want to fill it with and then how many of these do we have to push in there so basically because we have the size of every variable has some sort of some size with bits or sorry bytes bytes or bits no that's going to be in bytes and we say okay put zero in each of that size so that's why sorry that's why it needs what structure do we want to fill with set uh, what do we have to what do we want to set it with and how many times so all of it in this case all of that structure size of this and then next one and then this is how we access and we set the values of that structure in here so we have our server address dot sin family so this is the the address family and we set it to this don't ask me why now. Um, well, ask me, but later I'll show you why. There's a couple of different options. This one stands for the TC. No, it's not TCP. Oh, okay. Oh, in here. Sorry. So we have AF Unix or AF uh, INET. So that's the Internet Access. Oh, sorry. And these are the TPC and UDP. So stream is the you know connection mode. So this is a TCP connection. And in here is the uh, datagram, which is UDP, which is like, you know, the Skype and WhatsApp, where the data is not that, you know, the, qu the quality of data and data loss is, is high, but it doesn't matter, it's just, it works still, it's faster, way faster. And then there is something else that I don't know. So in here, we just set it up. Um, as you can see here, there's this HTONL and HTONS doesn't really matter maybe just like memorize uh, do you have to memorize it really it's kind of like th there's some address and it has to be in the format that this function spits out okay and and port has to be in the form that this function spits out but it's basically that server port that so comes from here and that comes from actually from the from the argument from the it's it's a parameter it's so like one of the arguments in the command line. Um, but yeah, but you kind of fill out this structure here. Mm, then we get to this. Okay, so we bind right now. So as I just, you remember this this diagram where in server, you first you create the, the, the settings for the server and then you bind use the bind and bind comes from this library and these are the snippets this is the snippet from the sys slash socket.h website that i found 
and there's a quick description here and um, so what it takes in it requires a socket address and address length um, inside of this kind of remember how it's being um, how, how can you how do you fill it out so in here it's easy you have this socket assigned to this variable so you just fuck that in and that's it comma and you get in here that's a that's a kind of strange that's something you probably want to memorize so first you create this and it's a C thing it's a C thing so first you create you declare this structure and then you have to say okay that's it the type of of this variable is all of this struct suck blah 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 struct uh, struct suck address and now I don't remember exactly but you remember the pointers and the values so this is like a pointer and then we want to take the value of it don't know how exactly it works memorize it so you you have this struct you know we'll have a snippet of a code so if you see it in here then you kind of just remember that okay it goes with the in the bind it goes with the the parentheses and uh, the pointer notation and then uh, and then you use the upper ampersand for the value and that's it that's it just memorize it somehow <laughs> and hopefully I will remember it and then uh, address length so you just size off this guy and this is very straightforward so this just when it comes to bind just remember that okay it takes socket address yeah because socket it needs to know which which socket um we are looking at and you know what socket is it's probably very complicated inside of that library but we don't need to know what socket is but kind of imagine actual physical socket that you have to you know you have to you have to put something inside of some of, of a socket to make the connection so this is you know it's called socket because you know in theory it does the same thing so we have to say okay I'm using this socket I am taking this this address um, and the size for some reason it needs the size it's it's a whole C thing uh, C needs to you know you have to tell C exactly how to manage its memory its memory um, so sometimes you have to like say okay this is going to be of that size uh, but it's not really significant the main thing is the socket and the address structure that you put in there so that's the, st the structure I'm talking way too long like that yeah okay never mind and um, so we are here so if okay so we just bound uh, our connection so now we're listening to that connection uh, straight away just next step is and there is the the die with system message blah 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 that's just error checking so again as I said before um, we do the bind thing and in here we can see like in here we had to assign it but in here we don't bind is just like do the bind and in the background it does something significant but we don't need to store it anyway anywhere we just have to test it if 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 it's not lesser than zero if it is give us a, a, an error the same here we don't assign listen to anything we just listen so in the background sorry in the background it does something significant again but it just we just have to call it and check if it didn't return minus one and uh, if it did uh, kill the program and give the, the message so in here again bit of description uh, again it comes from this library and listen function here's the description so have a read and we have to check okay so um, we have to put in oh yes so we have to put in um, which socket that, that we kind of listen to or we listen, listen from let's say imagine like you have a queue in one socket and there's like you know clients or connect or yeah clients coming in and you say at the very beginning you say okay I want to have maximum pending clients that can be five okay so and this is we use it here again just if 
if we want to change it, we change it here instead of here. We can easily just put in 10 in, the, in here or 5 and it, it, it's going to work. It's just kind of convention uh, that we keep it separate or sometimes we keep it in a separate file which we did with, the, with both size, buffer size. We put it in practical age. Well, just practice, good practice. So listen is very straightforward. We just say, hey, listen to that socket. Uh, we have the binding done. So don't don't worry. Okay, I skipped that one because that's basically just like a forever loop. It goes from nothing to nothing and does nothing. It's just like it goes forever and ever and ever. So it starts here and it ends here. Yeah. Um, kind of significant that you start here, you end here. So each time you close the socket, every time you loop through this loop, you you open the clock. Uh, the socket and you close the socket. Um, yeah, you accept it and then you, yeah, client socket, you accept it and then you close it every time you look through it. But it's a bit late, I'm just. Uh, okay, where are we now? Uh, number bytes, while number bytes. Okay, so we are here now. So again, this is kind of like two in one. We do while loop, but we assign um, the return value of the receive function to number bytes and we test it for that uh, while loop. You remember that the while loop is just like do something as long as this inside of this is true. So as long as what is true. Okay, receive. So this is our description of receive function. Um, it takes socket. It all, they all take socket. They need to know what the socket is, uh, except for the socket itself. Then we take the buffer. So that's the 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 variable that we initialize in here. Uh, where we're going to collect information that we receive. So this is where we kind of point where to put the information that we receive. And then what is, the again, the memory problem. So we need to say what is the maximum uh, length of that buffer? How how many characters in this case can we, how, how much information can we get? And minus one is because at the very end, we need to always keep the backslash zero. That's like the, the end of a string. So we need to always buffer the last um, the last index has to keep this. So we have some information inside. Um, yeah, so, okay, from, from the top. Receive, returns, um, an integer that is so you can see here num bytes first I, I assign 0 to num bytes so in here we change that value to whatever is the length of the buffer so it, it as the as we receive more information the num bytes becomes bigger and the, the index that we are pointing at in here you know moves to the right we the buffer becomes bigger and at the very end we say yeah and remember to put backslash zero backslash zero okay and that's it and then we in here we just print it so it's not a huge uh, yeah and the both both sides as I said before it comes from the practical age okay now and we print it console don't know why um. Yeah, so whatever comes in, we kind of just just for for checking. Sorry, buffers. Yeah, so we we progressively we we check what's the uh, what's in the buffer, and then if okay, so if string string. So I found this string string. Here's the description of string string. Basically, it checks the in the haystack. It looks for the needle. So if in the buffer you can find this um, and it returns um, 
pointer to the occurrence of haystack and any character specific in a needle or, or no no pointer eh? why do you check if it's your basically if you find this in the in the buffer then break stop the while loop because um we found the car carriage return so you want to just like stop this is the end of the of the message basically that's the end of the message if num bytes is less than zero so if we go back to the receive if we go back to the receive it says if it's less than zero so if it's minus one it indicates the the error i cut the line but basically it indicates the error and it says it here uh, Okay, it says it here, and oh, sorry, it says it here. Okay, so we use that in here. Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't have to go back. It's so late. So if it's minus one, then give us an error. Oh, sorry, and da, 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 size t. So again, s size t num bytes send. That's some probably from one of these. Uh, types libraries uh, num bytes send send okay so here it is uh, the description of send function and in here client socket so we use the client socket from inside of the while loop no uh, no not while loop instead of the for loop in here client socket we accept and that's accept that accepted socket goes here then we take the buffer so again we kind of we want to send something from the buffer um, and string string length so buffer is a string and we need to say what's the length of the of the message that we are sending with this send uh, in here behind us that that uh, arrow there's send uh, primitive from this socket dot h header file uh, library in other words uh, we just send something so this is the echo server so we send something to that echo server it listened it listened and listened it finished it checked if it's not minus one because if it's minus one then there is an error and in here um, we send send it back basically in, in this this bit here it just sends it back um to client socket yeah so back to the client um the same message of that length it requires the length some flags boolean flags which just say zero in this case if and we just check obviously if there's if it's not minus one because if it's minus one there was an error and we finish so close function it's it's not in the socket um library actually it's just like linux sorry it's the c standard c um function close a file descriptor i i mentioned something about file descriptors i don't know what they are um, but they close them so every time in this for loop it runs forever it's a server so if you don't close it, if you don't terminate it forcefully, so you don't, you know, control C or or turn off the computer or you know pull the plug, it's gonna just go forever and ever and ever and ever and just wait and listen and wait and listen. Sorry, it listens, but in here it kind of just if it accepts something, it creates this guy, this this client socket, and then it closes that socket every time this forever loop ends. Okay, sorry, uh, for the lengthy uh, blah, 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 of the lengthy nature of this video, but I'm close to wrapping up. So the difference between client and echo server, uh, echo or echo, echo, echo is something else, echo, echo server, echo client. So you have to build this structure called, uh, as as I mentioned before, that structure comes from that guy net in net slash in dot age 
and so in here we build it for a local server so I build it for myself so for example that line doesn't exist in here um, in here it's a bit different so you have to give it an address yeah so you have to give it an address but that address has to come from the server IP that we have in here so argv1 is basically um, argv1 is basically the address if I went all the way back you remember this dot slash echo client 127.0.0.1 80 and then in case of echo client you add one more parameter one more argument which is like the message itself so it's asking in here actually if it has uh, exactly five arguments uh, which means four parameters really uh, server address server port echo string and then double quotes in in double quotes okay so one two three uh, so why four Oh yeah, so sorry, so it has to be one, two, three, and four arguments all together. So including the um including the you know the call itself, the program itself, the echo client itself. So then it takes the server IP, stores it in this char star, and char star is basically string in C. So in you know modern like Python or JavaScript um, languages you can see string or str uh, char star is basically the same thing in it's a pointer to a character and whenever it C sees it thinks okay I'm gonna just follow this pointer and check another char and char and char and unless until it sees this guy backslash zero that's why we, we put backslash zero this is where it knows oh, okay that's the end of the string but anyway so and as I said all the arguments are seen by C by uh, seen by C language uh, as a string as char star so echo string again like our value the third one this one here index 3 so that's index 3 index 1 index sorry 2 index Three, two, one, and zero is the actual call of the for the echo client. <sighs> I'm digressing again. Yeah, so that port thing happens here, in here, but it's different index because we just call it in here one one parameter. In here we have three different parameters, and we have to just like you know put them into the specific. Uh, variables in here but in here it's the same kind of yeah it's the same and yeah so just so the cr the creation of the socket of the sorry socket address is different because we're not talking about the, the address of myself my, my own address we're talking about the address of the server I'll be connecting to so I need this information about the uh, uh, server IP that we put in here and so convert address rtn value rtn value how to remember rtn return value of the conversion okay we, we try to converse uh, a string into something that is being spit out by inet python sorry i didn't google it google it yourself it's another function somewhere just like google inet dash is underscore python c and you'll find this and it will say what kind of arguments it takes and what it returns um so it returns zero or less than zero and it is an error in our case and uh, here's an error check but this is a good example like we go and uh, we use this function inet python whatever you pronounce it and then you get uh, you put in this um, remember AF what it stands for address family 
So um, this AF can be found in here. So it's not like random name. It's actually specific to this library. So we use this, the, sorry, this connection, this, sorry, address family. Uh, server IP is this string. And you can see how funny, like, you don't have to say, you know, you don't have to put any funny uh, asterisks or or anything. You put an asterisk here and that's all it says that it's a string. But when you call the string, you say nothing. It's just like a string. So it's just something to remember. And then this hideous thing, it, it's basically where you want to put it. Where do you want conversion of this to be saved? And you want to save it inside of the of our address structure of this guy inside of that structure uh, and again as I said this is like a structure in a structure so inside of this structure dot inside of this structure dot inside of this structure actually so this is why we have two dots boom 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 and inside of there put that value yeah and then we get this which happens here as well. So htons is another function that just converts one data type to another that that suits this this data structure, but it's not not nothing especially important. Okay. Mm. What do we have here? Oh yeah, so the you know, the difference between um server and client is that you get you get uh, you use the connection connect function in the client and you do not use connect in here so I just put this slide so, so you can see how um, you know the description of it what goes in socket address ad address length it's very similar to um, to probably to listen sorry uh, no, 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 bind socket address no but listen to bind so connect and bind are just like a mirror uh, server uses bind and it it does it takes exactly the same arguments socket address and address length and if we go all the way to here oh, go back uh, it takes exactly the same socket address and address length um, and it returns the same kind of information so if it's minus one and in here we check it it's minus one um, break kill the program and send some um, message Whew. okay so with this information after hours of talking let me see if I'm still talking okay I'm still talking um, that would be a disaster if I was just like talking to myself now uh, let's do some uh, example and I'll do more um, next time just I wanted to give you something and focus on software engineering for now uh, da, 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 da. so how do we do this problem so first I'll just read it I always read very carefully first because it doesn't make sense to kind of like jump into it all scared and you know uh, anxious about I wonder what that is um, I kind of understand some some bits I'll start filling out uh, this word here gave me a lot of kind of uh, insight into whole that whole thing because that says okay that's the, the most primitive thing this is the most the, the easiest bit so I don't have to be too scared this is the, the, the beginning of the of the course of the module so that should be easy enough and it's a client probably because we did the client um, but it's also easy to see if it's a client or not and I'll tell you why so okay so we probably won't have this on the exam so it's important to memorize some bits bits and pieces so using line uh, using line numbers identify which xxx x value can be replaced with which term um, with which term uh, for above list so here's the sorry the list and we go through the code and as you can as you can see we compare it to our left side and in sock 
when we call basically it doesn't matter what stack called you can call it as and it still works um, we have to call it as in the future as well but basically if you want to um, call this function socket you need to know that the last argument is the protocol um, identification so this protocol uh, it's 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 stored let's say it's, let's say it's stored in one of those libraries so just remember that this is it IP protocol IP proto TCP and that's that's just the IP TCP protocol in here okay and then next one next one is here so mem as that's why I mentioned like it's good to know how memory set the mem set uh, function works so the first bit is the the, the the value of this structure serve address serve address is here and we want to fill it out with zeros so we have to give not only serve address but we have to say hey I want to take the value of uh, whatever it is put the, the ampersand but basically you can remember that okay I want to put this one in here when you see mem, mem set underneath this line and they go side by side so you want to fill this structure this variable that is this structure of this type and you want to uh, you want to fill it with zeros so you want to somehow put it in there so you look for it and you see oh there's this guy it has a ampersand but probably that's how it's done and then we go to here so family should remind you of the AF thing you remember the address family family so if you see family it's probably something AF something so this guy here and you can have you can see the proof yes that's exactly what it was and then return value okay return value I know the receive value has some sort of everything returns something but as you can remember the return it's it's from the conversion of 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 the string IP address into this whatever type this function returns so and kind of yeah that's why you have to remember that this function converts the string of the IP address and it converts it into whatever can you hear my cat stupid little thing anyway so um it's it's a very meaningless name though inet python inet python how to remember that this thing inet python converts ip address in a string into something else inet python i don't know python is like python so maybe think of python conversion i don't know i don't know just pick yours and then server address that's the second last uh, what do we put in here well that kind of says it all that's our port so we want to and you remember that serve address structure this structure here has all the sin something sin something like sin family sin port sin blah 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 so it's going to be sin something and port uh, like relevant to port so we look for sin sin port yep yeah. let's check sin port yep yeah. it would be more tricky if they ask for this but it's the h tons hd something uh, that converts uh, that string sorry that was the integer into whatever they want in the sin port anyway and if connect um was the first when you do connect what's the first thing you have to put in and it's usually socket when you connect when you do those silly things um the binds the listen the you always have to give a listen and then what is the next one receive whatever you have to put the first one is usually socket so you look for our socket is called sock oops so it's going to be sock boom and it is indeed suck
Okay, second question is state whether this is a client or server application justifying your answer. So as you can, in, this is important, you remember this. Um, and you rem remember that you're looking for those functions. So you're looking for functions called socket, bind, connect, listen, accept, send or receive. And kind of see if they go like this or they go like this. So uh, this is socket first, and then nothing, nothing, nothing here. We just create a structure, and then we convert something, and that kind of tells me as well, like using, you know, when we, if if we have to, um, do this. That kind of tells me okay, I'm a client because I, I have to specifically say, uh, in the command line, I have to specifically. Uh, say what is the address that I'm going to connect to and and then I have to convert it from from this Jesus Christ stupid cats I actually have two cats now we play together that's funny <sighs> yes um, da -da -da -da. yeah but anyway there is no bind I'm looking for bind and I don't see bind and the next thing I see is connect and it's a good thing also that there is no such thing as connect in server and there is no such thing as bind and listen and accept in client. So if you see bind, listen and accept, it's a, it's a server. If you see connect, it's a client and that's given. So easy peasy. And then this is the, as I said before, this was like the important like a keyword for me because it told me, that, okay, this is the, the easy bit. And so there's no sending with the daytime as a client. I didn't send anything. I was just like receiving stuff. So the question is, okay, if this snippet of code is derived from a daytime application, identify the socket primitive. So I think socket primitive are these so the, these functions here, the socket function and you know connect function, bind function. That's what I I understand by primitive. Um. To be called exactly like if you you don't call variables you don't call values you, you call functions I assume the primitives are you know these so my my answer would be receive I'll say it's receive um, and that's it so I'm gonna go and do all of those. Um, I have them ready here somewhere. Yeah, so I, I I'll do all of those uh, questions in the next video. And there is the HTTP thing as well. So that's the, but that that's so you can focus on this now. Sorry, you can you can use this now. And if it makes sense. That, that's gonna give you a lot of confidence how it works. I think it makes sense. Um, kind of, you know, we went through it one by one. If you don't remember, just do it again. You know, it's it's it really helps if you do that kind of, you know, in in life, in the program in life. If you, you know, you're doing your internships now, or you you're gonna get a job as a programmer. You know, you get someone's code, and it's important you understand. You know most of it if you have time, obviously. Now we still have time, so if you kind of go through it one by one, and you really understand, okay. You know, you don't have to know exactly everything, like I told you before. As I told you before, I'm telling you all the time, but you don't really have to know exactly why there there is this ampersand. What is there, and just memorize it. But it, it kind of, you know, I mentioned why we use this function, and that's, you know, we, we don't have to know much more. Okay, so happy learning. I'm going to just upload this on stream. That's crazy. Okay, so see you. Bye bye. bye.